Welcome back. Topic of tonight's video, hooking up a three-wire alternator. So here's our three-wire alternator. Um, basically, there's three uh, wires on it. This is your voltage out. So this goes back to your battery. This is your, uh, I don't know the actual technical terms for any of these, but this is the wire that senses the amount of voltage that's being put out. So instead of uh, having an external voltage regulator, there's an internal voltage regulator. Um, you can run this back to the battery so that it takes into account the voltage drop of all the wires. Or you can do what a lot of people do, and just shortcut it right there. So it senses the amount of voltage that's coming out of the alternator. Uh, that's how this one came. I'm going to leave it like that. And then this last wire here is the exciter. So basically, once 12 volts is applied to this wire, it tells the alternator, okay, start generating current, uh, and then it starts charging your battery to simplify things. <clears throat> you can see I've just got a temporary twist on the wire there. Uh, so I've tested this alternator that way, just touching the, bat the exciter wire to the battery. Everything seems to work with it, so now I want to hook everything up permanently. Um, however, the issue that people can run into is if we back feed on the uh, exciter wire. So with this being hooked to keyed 12 volt and also being a source of 12 volt power, um, once this is excited and the alternator starts producing electricity, it's possible for this to back feed through your system so that even when you turn your key off, the 12 volt that's coming out of the alternator will keep your uh, ignition energized and the tractor won't shut off when you turn off the key. So there's two ways to deal with this. Um, the first way is putting a light bulb in, in that uh, exciter line. That's where the generator light on the dash on a lot of the old trucks and that come from. Um, I don't really want to drill another hole and put a light or anything in, so I've ordered some diodes off of Amazon. I'm going to solder this diode in, on, uh, in line on the exciter wire. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to show you how to determine which direction it goes. So basically, in this one, it's a little hard to see on the camera, but there's a line on one side of the diode. Uh, and that points to your cathode. Now, basic electronic theory isn't uh, fresh in my mind, so I'm going to do the old-fashioned way to figure out which way this diode should be installed in the circuit. You see I've got my handy-dandy test light here. I'm going to get you guys in a stand, and we can test this out. Basically, if you don't know, the function of a diode is to only allow current to flow one way. So uh, instead of having a wire there that lets current go whichever way it wants to, uh, this will stop current from going the wrong way and therefore stop from back feeding and letting the tractor run after the key's off. So get you guys in the stand. We're going to test this and make sure that uh, I'm going to install it the right direction and we'll go from okay, there. Okay, I had my battery charger hooked up here because I actually left the key on the other day. I got lucky. Didn't burn out my points. Just killed the battery because energizing the uh, coil for over 24 hours will do that. <clears throat> All right. So we've got my mangled light clip. So I've got the diode in. I'll just put it in a random way right now. Uh, stripe facing away from me. And I'm going to connect that to the positive side of the battery and then touch the negative side with my light and I've got no light. I'm going to turn this around so the stripe is away from the positive terminal. I'm going to touch the positive side, touch the negative with my light and there we go, now we've got light. So what that tells me is that when I install this, if I want the current to flow down the wire to the alternator, 
the line should be away from the positive on the battery and towards the alternator. So now that I've figured out uh, where that goes, get out my wire strippers, soldering equipment, and let's get this underway. Okay, so we're back at the other end of the tractor here. So when we're done, we want to use this white wire that comes with the harness. And we're going to have stripe towards the alternator, white wire from the alternator, solder all this together, wrap it up in some electrical tape and we'll call her good. I'm sure there's some sort of holder or something that we could put around the diode, but I'm not that concerned. They're literally probably 25 cents a piece, if that. I have a whole bag. So. Something happens to it, I'll replace it, and that and at that time I'll put something on to protect it. Nothing too fancy about my soldering skills or job here. I am going to opt to use my iron rather than my soldering torch uh, just because working this close to the gas, I prefer not to have an open flame. Soldering iron works. Yep, starting to heat up. It's always a question when stuff sits on the shelf for so long. So the part that most people get wrong when they're soldering and they end up with cold solder joints is they kind of just melt the solder on the iron and let it fall onto the material that you're trying to solder together. And that's not the way to do it. Basically you have to heat up the material that you're soldering so that when the solder makes contact with the material it flows. Um, then you get a proper bond. Anything other than that and you'll end up with cold solder joints. That's warm, but she's stuck. I'm just going to grab some pliers to give that the tug test. There you go. She's solid. All right. When she cools enough to the touch, I can wrap the other side. Now I'm sure there's better placement for this. I'm sure people could do it more professional looking, etc. But I'm an amateur. I fully admit that. If it works, it works. I don't mind having some electrical tape showing here. 
if at some point I want to move it. But it doesn't take much solder to move it. And there we go. Nice secure connections. Now I'm just going to grab my side cutters so I can snip the ends and then we'll tape it up and good enough. Now, a professional would have used some heat shrink around it. I didn't have heat shrink big enough to go over top of the diode. And I don't want to go buy it just for this one little job. So tape it is. There we go. I might redo it one day with heat shrink, but for now, good enough. Now I do have an extra wire here, because this wiring harness was actually meant for the uh, generator, which would have had a wire going back to the voltage regulator. I'm just going to leave that there. Just You can't uncut a wire. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. I'll uh, probably end up strapping it back or something to keep it out of the way. Um, but just in case at some point I decide I want to either run this back to the battery to get the voltage there to, to regulate this, or if I convert it back to 6 volt, that wire will be there. These wires are a little crappy looking to probably end up replacing them at some point, likely when I'm trying to make this pretty, but that's going to come after the W6. Okay, this end isn't going to be the easiest thing to film. Um, but hopefully you can make out so this blue wire right here Comes off of the key. So this is this is the wire that gets energized When you turn on the key, so one end is at your Ignition switch your keyed ignition switch the other end goes up To the side of the ballast resistor now the current goes through that ballast resistor and then comes out this red wire out to our coil. So what I want to do is connect this white wire, which is the wire that we soldered the diode to at the other end. And I want to put it onto this post, because that's our switched 12 volt power. So when we turn off the key, power will stop being provided to this line. Loosen this off a little. Oh, is that enough? This is much more difficult when you're trying to avoid getting in the way of a camera.
Come on, sneak in there. There we go. All right, let's tighten that back up. Sorry for the motion sickness. I'm doing the best I can. All right. <clears throat> now, theoretically, we should have a charging system. Okay, we got tractor running. See, ammeters says it's charging. We're gonna do a voltage test on here. We should see somewhere around uh, 13 and a half, 14 volts. Put you guys in the carrier here. I'm going to hold this so that you guys can see. Right. That's obviously not right. There you go. Oh. Yep, I can hold it steady. I'm seeing 14 volts. There you go. Just over 14 volts, so we're charging. All right. Now the real test, shut off the key. No back feed, everything works. All right, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll be back with another video in a couple days.